If you listen to what I'm gonna tell you in this video, you could literally save yourself years of frustration. Hey everyone, I'm Jonah Fox with the Harmonica Revolution, and recently I've been thinking, why do some musicians, maybe even you watching at home, take such a long time to learn how to play? Why does it take some people, you know, years to learn how to bend? Uh, what is it, you know? And I've taught people on a bunch of different instruments. It's not just harmonica. This is something that everybody goes through. Some people think that it's talent, but I'm just not sold on that. You know, you can have an affinity to something. You can be naturally good at something, but it doesn't really matter if you don't do the work. I've been reflecting on all the different students I've had over the years, and I, in my experience, it really comes down to this. Some players are better at teaching themselves. <laughs> and even if they're going to see a teacher, they have a better sense at judging their problems, like what issues they're having and they're playing, they're good at finding ways to solve those problems and they do the work. That's really it. And if they're not good at assessing that, they have a teacher that's good at assessing that and they're doing that for them. It's honestly pretty simple. You just need someone in your life that is saying, oh, you could work on this and here's how to do it. The problem is with harmonica, there's not that many teachers, especially locally. Of course, you can reach out to someone on the internet like me, but for most players, they don't have a teacher and they're learning like you're doing right now on YouTube. So you gotta learn how to be your own teacher because that's what option you have. And this really is a skill that you personally can develop. And today I'm gonna show you how. Most music teachers would not want me telling you this because if everyone learned how to do this, how to be their own teacher, it would put us all out of a job. But despite that, I want you to succeed. So I'm going to teach you this skill today and you're gonna save years of frustrating harmonica practice. So let's go and do this. To learn how to be your own teacher, I suggest that you follow a simple three-step process that I'm going to outline for you now. Again, you could pay someone to do this for you, but you could figure it out too, right? So step one is identify what can be improved about your playing. Pretty simple. Step two, create an exercise to solve the problem. And step three, just do the work. Repeat the exercise over a couple days and on some extreme cases, a couple weeks. Let's go through these steps for a few different types of players at different levels. So a good way to identify your problems is to not just think about them because you don't know your own blind spots, but to record yourself and just assess what can be improved. Like when I have a student in front of me, in person especially, I have them play something for me and I'm thinking immediately, like, what are you doing that is an issue? What's holding you back, you know? And I've seen all sorts of things, you know, issues with rhythm, issues with playing the right notes, issues with some technique. And you need to figure out which one of those things is the most important thing for you to fix. And so to do that, I really suggest you take a video of yourself so you can get a more objective view on the situation. So pull your phone out, take something that you're playing and hit the record button. After you record, we're gonna put our teacher hats on and try to find the biggest problem and find out surgically how to fix it. There are some issues here. So let's go back to those steps I went over earlier to kind of figure out what's happening and what we should do about it. Okay, so step one was to identify what can be improved about your playing. Now, very commonly, there's gonna be multiple things to fix, but what's the biggest issue here? I think it's playing single notes. The notes that they're playing are super messy. And if you know anything about harmonica, you'll know that that's like the first hurdle that you have to overcome. And if until you overcome it, your playing's just not gonna be very good. So let's move over to step two. Create an exercise to solve the problem. 
Now, this is a spot where you can get creative. You don't always have to follow my solutions. The point here is that you start thinking in this way, but this is how I would approach it. So I think, what can be done to fix this, this uh, messiness with playing single notes? Well, for any mechanical skill that you're learning, you need lots of correct repetition. And this is where a teacher like me would give you an exercise. Well, you're the teacher now, so what do you do? Well. What I would do is I'd say, try my conscious repetition exercise. Here's what this is, right? We're trying to play a single note. So we're just going to repeatedly go over that action, not paying attention to songs, playing the right note. We're just going to work on getting a single note, just that one physical skill of developing your embouchure, okay? So what you're going to do is form your embouchure, play your harmonica up to your mouth, play a single note, okay? Just pick a hole, play the single note. Now, if it works like that, right, like I just did, then just keep repeating it, and you're good. Pick a different hole, and you're set. Maybe this issue wasn't actually big for you, but more than likely, you're gonna hear something like this. And you'll notice yourself making some certain mistake over and over again. And this is where you're going to just kind of change whatever's happening in your mouth, pull the harmonica back up to your face, play a note and try to fix that issue. You know, try to get to the root of what you're doing wrong and fix it. And once you fix it, you're going to repeat it over and over and over again. You know, what I'm saying here, get it right 20 times before you move on to a different hole. Like just keep working at it. That's really what it takes. And then you move on to step three. Just repeat this exercise over a few days or in some extreme cases, weeks until you fix the problem. So that means Every single day, before you do other things, you know, maybe do a warm up, but after your warm up, focus on single notes. Okay, I gotta fix that. So if you do this, you're going to develop more consistency with playing your single notes, right? Because if you're getting it correct every day when you're focusing on this one problem in isolation, you start to apply that to a song, you're probably gonna clean your playing up. And you really don't even need to spend a lot of time doing this. I think like 10 minutes a day, maybe 15 minutes a day, and you don't need to do it for so long. Just do it till the problem is solved. You know, do this every day for a week and you might notice that your single notes are really good. In fact, I'd be very surprised if you were still having the same issues you were having at the start of the week if you actually did this every single day for even 10 minutes. So if you are having a similar issue with your single notes, here's the reality. You just haven't spent enough time focusing on cleaning up your notes. Instead of just waiting years to slowly figure it out and slowly get better as you're working on everything, go get some laser focus, fix the problem, and then just move on with your life. Okay, let's try another. This player is learning a second position blues jam. Let's take a listen. Okay, there's obviously some issues here, so let's put on our teacher hat and work this out. So step one, identify what can be improved. Now, again, there could be multiple things here, but think of what is the most important thing that needs to be worked on. And in my opinion, I would say the bends. The bends are kinda iffy, you know? Sometimes the bends are going too low, okay? Sometimes the bends are not going far enough and you got to spend some time working out your bends so when you actually use them in a song and you apply them, that they're gonna work, right? So then we move to step two, create an exercise 
to solve the problem. If you're creative, maybe you can come up with an exercise that involves hitting bends repeatedly and accurately that will improve this skill for you. But sometimes we just don't know what we don't know, okay? And to figure this out, you're gonna have to see what other people are recommending. So go on YouTube, look for bending tutorials from teachers like me or all the other YouTube harmonica teachers and see what do people recommend because maybe your understanding of bending is wrong. So start there, right? Maybe learning a new concept like the one that I go over in this video would help you and you just don't have that information. Well, you got to figure it out, right? Maybe you just don't know how to practice bending. Like you get the idea, but you don't know how to do the daily work. Well, if you dig through some videos, you might find that some players use an app to work out their bends. There's apps that will tune the note for you and it'll just show you where you are in reality. So you're gonna think like a teacher here and give yourself some homework. Watch a new YouTube tutorial on bending every day. Maybe that's where you start. Maybe something is gonna click for you. And then, oh, I remember that app. So you're gonna go and get an app like Harmonica Bending Trainer and start bending with it and get some visual feedback on where your bends are actually landing so you know if you need to take them further or you need to back off on them a little bit. Maybe once you have your bends practiced a little bit with the apps, you can work on a scale, like the blues scale that involves bends. And you can give that scale to yourself as an exercise to work on every day to actually apply the bending knowledge that you've been working on and developing in your exercises before that. And if you don't know how to work on scales like that, you can check out my free scale cheat sheet PDF and the link is gonna be down in the description. If you do that for a week or two, honestly, I'd be very surprised if your bends were not greatly improved. So remember when I said that this could save you years. Now that is not clickbait. For most players, learning to bend may take somewhere around 30 hours of focus practice to learn. For some of you, that's gonna sound like too much. For some of you, that's gonna sound like not enough. But in reality, that's my experience. That's how long it takes to learn most skills if you're actually actively working on figuring it out. But some players just don't work in this surgically precise way. You spend your time jumping from YouTube tutorial to YouTube tutorial, maybe learning a song, and you you spread those hours of working on your bends, as an example, very thin throughout the course of a few years. Now, if you can get yourself to laser focus on the problem, right, and spend that 30 hours in the course of one, two, maybe three weeks, then you're gonna overcome the challenge of bending in two or three weeks and not multiple years. This is really the best way to make real progress on this instrument. Just work in short bursts where you actually solve your problems and you do what is necessary to improve and after that problem is solved, try focusing on the next obstacle. And this doesn't mean that all of your playing has to be like hard technique uh, practice or anything like that. It really doesn't. Just have an idea of what's the next thing that I should focus on improving. Like for me, one thing that I'm working on is getting better at playing in the high end of my harmonica. So sometimes I run that just the high octave as a scale and I'll do some improvising just working on that range of my instrument. And after doing that for a couple days, I'm a lot better at it. So let's go back to our examples. Let's try another. That's not a harmonica. <laughs> oh. oh, I see the problem here. You just haven't liked the video yet. Okay, for real, let's try another where the situation isn't so cut and dry as before. So the player in this example is just going to be improvising over a couple different blues backing tracks. Let's take a listen.
Here's another one, let's go. Step one, identify what can be improved. Well, when I hear this, everything sounds more or less okay mechanically, but every jam sounds pretty much the same. With that in mind, the issue that I see is a lack of musical vocabulary. They just don't have enough ideas in their head, right? They probably need to learn more riffs and licks to make their playing more varied. So step two, create an exercise to solve the problem. The problem here is that they're probably at a plateau, like they've learned a bunch of techniques and stuff, but a lot of what they play sounds the same because they haven't learned new ideas. So that's what we're going to fix. They need these ideas. So how do you get these ideas, which are going to be riffs and licks? Well, you steal them. You should check out a book called Steal Like an Artist. I'll link it down in the description. And the whole idea is that as artists, as musicians, as you know, visual artists, whatever, we're kind of taking little bits of ideas that have been done already from a bunch of different people. And that's how you develop a style as an artist, right? And that's how you're going to learn harmonica as well. You're going to take little ideas from a bunch of different people. And what you're going to get is your style. If you're going to learn a bunch of riffs and licks from other harmonica players, what are you going to do? Let's work backwards here and figure this out. Well, we want to learn something from a musician, which means we need to find something to learn, right? So maybe go on Spotify and go open a blues harmonica playlist and listen to a bunch of songs and maybe find a song you like, okay? So you got it. Now load it up on YouTube and you can use some functions on YouTube to slow the playback speeds. You can learn something something, or you can use a cool new website that I just found called looptube.io. I'll link it down below. It lets you slow down and loop parts of a YouTube video, which is perfect for learning music. I found it this week and it's super useful and a lot easier to set up than the transcription programs that I normally use. So you got the program loaded up. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to find the key. Okay. You're going to figure that out. Maybe through a Google search, maybe through trying a couple harmonicas, and then you are going to learn this riff probably starting slow and then moving up faster. And then once you've gotten the general idea down, you're going to try it out over a couple different backing tracks. And step three is to repeat this whole process over a few days. If you did this every day, like you actually learned a riff or a lick from a harmonica player that you like, and you did this even for a week, you would be so bursting with new ideas and motivation, your playing wouldn't be stale and stagnant anymore, and you'd be very excited to learn more music. The bottom line is this, if you know where you want to go, find a path to get there and just do the work or, you know, pay a teacher like me to figure it out for you. And I'm happy to do that. If you're interested in being my student, well, send me an email, I'll put it down in the description. So YouTube thinks that you will like this video and this video over here is going to help you with your bending if that's something that you are currently working on. That's it for today and I will see you next time. Peace.